sketching. Okay, um, we've been over calligraphy, inking, drawing, <laughs> and now we're into sketching. More pencils. I, this one is called peppermint. This is how I sketch when I'm sketching. I use um, multiple but if I wanted to make this, but I want to use, I want the lines to show like I would, like you do in a coloring book, uh, I would add another layer and use a different pen, which was the one that we saw, the uh, uh, strokes, the drawing pens. I would single stroke, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Where's my studio pen? Ah, there it is. I would use single strokes. You know, better. And use my sketch as a blueprint. Now, I'm not very good at this. And you can always make it really strong straight if you want to do let's see what kind of roof we have oh we have a flat roof <laughs> a peaked flat roof we made it and let's do a window hold it and it's perfectly straight hold it that's perfectly straight And it's perfectly straight. Look at that. We have a window. Of course, I would use a, I'd need a monoline, which is a, a pencil or pen that does not change size. But now, when we get rid of the sketch, we have just the outline. And this is what you would start working, adding layers and doing painting. Um, because by adding a layer and choosing a different color, um, and moving it, watch the way this is cool. It looks like I'm, pa I'm painting over the lines, but if I move this number, there it goes, below the color. If I put the color below the um, layer, you can see you've got the, the black lines here. So when I Reverse this, it will also delete the layers. So you have to be careful. Because you go too far. But you can always bring it back. Three, three fingers brings it back. And it brings back the next layer. And the next layer, as you can see, where I moved it. Now, if I were doing this, I would use my eraser up to the line. Rather than start drawing and painting within lines, uh, it's so much easier to do color in here. Very easy. See? Easy peasy. And there we have a house. And you can see the house on this layer right there. And let's go back to where we were. Okay. Uh, next sketching is Derwent. I don't know if you've ever seen a Derwent pencil. I'm not sure what the differences are. Oh, let's go back to black. Pressing harder makes it wider, which I'm not sure. Up and down with the point makes it much darker. I have no idea what a Derwent pencil is. Let's see what happens when I do it on the side. This is sideways. I get a wider stroke. And it's just like using a pencil to 
shade in and create something. Oh, I like that. So this is a good pencil for sketching. I know I make lots of, I love making circles though, especially when um, Procreate does makes them for you. It'll start with an oval, but if you put your finger down, makes it a perfect circle. Okay, here's Procreate pencil. <laughs> okay, this is a straight up and down, consistent size with pressure, light pressure, same color, sideways. The more I tilt it towards the tip, the darker it gets. Oh man, that is neat. But again, you get, this is like a hard pencil to me because you would get very light, you get very light um, painting on, uh, or pe penciling, if you're doing shading with a hard pencil. You know, which is, yeah. Here's a technical pencil. What is the difference? Well, let's design a room. Isn't that nice? Now, there's an easier way to do this. If I just draw a square, hold my pen, it makes a square. But unless you draw it perfectly, <laughs> wait, wait, I think, let's try this again. Square makes a square. And if you put your finger down, just like it made a perfect circle from an oval, it makes a perfect square from your wobbly one. <laughs> It also does triangle. Perfect triangle. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so we see what... Uh, let's make a couch. Uh, let's make a little kitchen here. Let's make a door here. How about a dining room table? This is similar to the layout I had. Let's make some sliding glass doors right here and a bit of a patio. And we have a, a bedroom out here <laughs> with a door right here. I just, whatever. <laughs> I guess this is what you would use a technical pencil for. It's very thin. Uh, even when it goes up to 100%, it's still very thin. And monochrome. Which is why they call them... What is it? Monopole? Whatever. I don't know. Here's another... Here's an HB. I used to know this when I was a kid. An HB pencil is a hard pencil with a little, like a semi-hard pencil. You can see it's got sideways. Lighter, doesn't make it that much lighter. And straight up and down, it's very perfect. You know? So straight up and down, even at its largest, it's very thin. Holding it like a regular pencil, you would, it's... Because I hold mine slightly sideways. I don't know about you. Yeah. <laughs> no good of faces either. 
Not if I don't concentrate. Okay, um, another HB pencil. Okay. <laughs> it looks like the same to me. Holding it like a pencil. It gets that that edge to it, that soft edge. Holding it upside down, uh, straight up and down. Very thin. You learn something new every day. Okay, here's a 6B pencil. Let's take a little bigger. Well, bigger. Hold. And thumb down. Perfect. But as you can see, this has a little bleeding. So, using this, it's going to be a little darker. This is slightly sideways. This is the largest size, so it's, this is com almost completely sideways. The way I would hold it if I wanted to use it for sh sh for shading, but mm, not as wide as I'd like it. Mm, there goes the wiggle again. We've seen it. It's dark and straight when you want it. It does have a little bit of texture along the side. Oop. Let's do this. As you can see, it has a little bit of texture, and it. But you hold it hard and directly up and down. <laughs> that's not. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that, an arrow, and show you how dark it can get, and show you how light it can get on one stroke. So, again, it's different. Uh, for those of you who are into pencil drawings, I'm not, but I've seen some wonderful ones. I wish, I wish I could do things like that. I did do that sketch of Gizmo, which I'll show you in a minute, but that took a long time. <laughs> and I cheated. I used a picture as reference. Here we got another one. What is this one? Another 6B. <laughs> I have two 6Bs. It's about the same. It's a little bigger, fatter, I think. Don't you? I don't know. But it's got the same, you know, it's got the same consistency right there. Same ragged edge and texture. Unless you press really hard, then you'll get a super black line. But it still has texture on the edge. Interesting. Fascinating it's for me. Like I said, I don't do a lot of drawing, but you might. Narender pencil. Okay. Uh, not sure what a Narender pencil is. This is at the biggest. Sideways, okay. Light pressure. It stays thin. Pressure does not change the size. Let's take a look at it. It too has a texture to it. And it can get really thin. But I don't see where it can go super dark. It'll go super dark in some areas. You know, down there. But you have to press hard to get super dark. Nice. Okay. If you, if you need 
a really thin pencil to do cross hatching with. This is your pencil for use. <laughs> it's, that's thin. All right. Now we have a soft pastel pencil. I'm not sure what that is. Um, it looks like it's a soft pastel on canvas. Let's pick a color. How dark does it go? Unless you stroke over it. One stroke, not that dark. Two strokes, darker. But what kind of a background is this? Almost looks like um, something woven. Like a, or knitted, but a sideways knit. But it only has the up and down. Oh, and this is another one that pulls. What happened? Shoot, I'm on a race <laughs> again. I, that keeps happening to me once in a while. Yeah. It's, and it looks like it's maintaining the same size. No matter where I go. Nope. Ah, that's big. <laughs> So, if you wanted to cover the entire canvas, you wanted to make a texture for the entire, there you go. There's a nice background. It does look like knitted, like a knit. And there's your entire background, if you want. Let's go next is oil pastel. I'm not sure what an oil pastel is. Let's lower the pa opacity. Eh, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Very oily. Let's see how big it gets. Ah! Look at that. We've got another texture here. This one, it looks like the same knit, but sideways. And apparently, you can't get it, uh, it, it gets too watery at the edges, or too much, too oily, to do, do this in one stroke. You're going to get the light up here. Look at that. This is pressing very hard. I wonder if it will, now well, it just brushes over it. Doesn't blend, okay. Well, let me take a look. And last one is an artist's crayon. Okay, too big. <laughs> but it does look like a, a crayon. And that our child would write it with a crayon, but I'm drawing. I'm gonna I'm gonna color this in. I'm gonna make a teepee and color it in. Or maybe it's a tree. Yeah, that looks like crayon. <laughs> and go a little bigger. You get a bigger brush. And let's see what this does at its biggest. What kind of a uh, texture it leaves us. Because again, all of these can be used. Oh, cool. Use this in a, come on, a light gray. No, that's a lavender. Hmm, interesting. Uh, where's my light gray? I want a, or beige. Here we go, a beige. Look at that. That's a nice background. And it's crayon. 
There's always something new to discover in these brushes. All right. We now get to go to the next library, which is spray paints. <laughs> I like this one. This is cool. An ultra fine uh, spray. And I'm not pressing hard. If I press hard, I'm going to get full color and it seems to expand. A fine nozzle. Yeah, there's a difference. Because the, the top one is softer. A medium nozzle. Which is almost solid. Yeah. And a fat nozzle. I'm pressing very lightly and it's still going very strong. And the differences are the edges. Along here, this is the medium. This is the hard. This is the medium soft. And this is the soft. You can see the way the edges blend. Same here. The edges blend more. Though it's funny. Well, here's the soft. <laughs> this I went over twice. And but yeah, you can see the difference. How how the lighter color is bigger. And yet here it's tighter. It's closer and darker. Interesting. Whoop! There we go. Next is splatter. Oh, I love this. You you want you've done, you've completed, you want a splatter. And this is a dual color splatter. That's funny, it's supposed to do these. Uh it just it uses I don't know why it's using the blue the purple, but yeah, see that? But if you just want a, a splotch, and it doesn't look, it looks like you actually drop paint <laughs> all over your, uh, your painting, which a lot of artists do. They, it's a uh, it's a look. Here are flicks. Okay, I don't, that's what flicks are. Flicks are little round. The, I wouldn't call this splatter because they're much rounder than splatter would be. Ah, press harder and they get larger, softer, and they are bigger, smaller. Let's see what the biggest is. Whoop. Ah! Cute. Could use that for a background somewhere. Maybe a dress. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I like that. That's cool. This is a burst. And... I would call this more of a stamp because, yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not a brush. It doesn't go from, you know, right into the other one. It makes separate little stamps. Um, so I would use this as a stamp. smaller and bigger and whatever you want dotted you know dots long uh but they're very it's a splat because uh, yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> oh. <laughs> because these are spray paints and that's how a splat on a, a, a spray paint would work but what if you're painting 
on a wall. You get a splat and a drip. <laughs> now, the problem with some of these is you can only use them once on a painting. If you use them more than once, then people are going to know that it's a graphical program because you can't make, get the exact same look from regular real paint, real spray paint. So you have to, you'd have to go and find, you can use this once, but you'd have to go and find other uh, brushes to use out there. There are a lot of free ones and you can buy them too. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did, and I learned a lot. Uh, there are more brushes to show you, another two libraries that come with Procreate. Um, yeah, <laughs> and they're a little interesting. So we'll go through those in the next video. And after that, um, I will be showing you the brushes that I have purchased or downloaded for free, and there are a lot of them, but I'm going to show you the fun ones, the ones that I think are a little funky <laughs> and interesting. So, until the next time, I'm going